If you're ready to start a virtual assistant business in 2024, or you're like, I want to earn some extra money, but I'm not sure how to do it, then this video is gonna be for you because I'm going to give you all the gems that you need to start your online business this year. Now, the reason why I love sharing the gems and things that I'm gonna share in this particular video to help you get started with your virtual assistant business, because I feel like a virtual assistant business is the entryway to starting an online online business. Now, in case you're not aware or you're new here, I'm Kaniqua J. I'm a website designer in the system strategist located here in Virginia. And I actually went to and quit my nine to five call center job. This was back in 2015. And I wasn't really too sure exactly what it is that I wanted to do, but I knew that I was tired of getting paid a minimum wage. I knew that I was sick and tired of working for someone else. And I just wanted the freedom to be able to do what I wanted to do. And so I went through and I started a virtual call center business, but then later took my skills and I started offering my finding clients and offering my services as a VA. And I was offering pretty much everything out of the sun from calendar management. I was doing inbox management. I was doing social media, of course, website design. I was doing everything. Now, a couple of things that I found over the course of my journey is that I found that for me, I wanted something a little bit more specialized that I wanted to do versus being so tied down with the mundane task of the VA. But again, if you want to go through and start this type of business, it is the perfect thing to be able to get you off your feet, help you make additional income, and help you to be able to go through whether you do it as a side hustle or a business. I feel like it's the best entry point to getting online. So a couple of things that I personally recommend and the experiences that I had as a VA, and I did very well. I became booked out as a virtual assistant. Again, I ran my virtual assistant business for about two years until I cut off all of those other services and really honed in on website design and doing system builds. If you're looking to start your virtual assistant business because you're like, I'm tired of going through and just making minimum or I need a couple extra dollars in the bank, listen, the first thing that I recommend is for you to go through and determine the services that you wanna offer. What I like about being a virtual assistant, and in case you're not aware too, um, then I don't wanna think that you are aware because by this time you might've heard the term VA virtual assistant, but you might not have, right? So a virtual assistant is pretty much a person that is going to be remote or virtual and they work for small to medium sized businesses and they complete tasks like doing inbox management, like clearing down emails, answering emails. It could be doing community management. It could be graphics. It could be social media. It could be things like that, right? The reason why, like I said before that, I feel like this is a really good entry point is because you can take the skills that you already have. So there is a low entry point to being a virtual assistant because there's not many things that you need. You need like a computer, you need a reliable internet, you need an email so people can communicate with you. And of course there's other things that you may need, which I'll talk about later in the video that will just help you to run your business more efficiently and effectively. But overall, there's not a whole bunch of overhead that you need. So you can get started as a virtual assistant if I were to say probably under 50 bucks for real, if you already have a computer, then you're pretty much gonna be about under about $50 or something like that, right? You probably already have internet for your house. So you're good to go with that. The other thing is that you don't have to have any type of specialized skills per se. You can take the skills that you already have from your current nine to five or things that you're already doing in your business. And you can take those skills and you can find the clients and offer those services. So a couple of things that I really want you to think about, I'm gonna kind of give you a few examples. So let's say for example, maybe you are doing a nine to five and you are in the HR field maybe, right? And, or accounting or something like that. You can offer accounting services to clients. Even these days, to be perfectly honest with you, you can even go through and create templates for some of those services that you offer. That's another video for another day, but you can take the skills that you already have and you can offer them. So like for myself, really. So I had customer service skills, right? I was good talking on the phone. Of course I can answer emails. That was something that I was able to offer that I didn't have to go through and get any other type of specialized skills. Now, will getting more specialized skills and honing in on other high level tasks help you or being a specialist in a particular area? 
Will that help you to be able to earn more money? Of course it will. However, when you're first starting out, honey, you can go through and you can use the skills that you already have. What I recommend is when you're trying to go through and determine the skills or determine what you're going to offer is I would write down about three to five things that you know how to do on a computer, right? Because you're virtual. So think about three to five things that you know how to do that uses a computer. Write down those three to five things and offer those things as a service. You can go through and you can package them up or you can do them separately just depending on what exactly they are. Okay, so now that you've gone through, you've figured out the services that you wanna go through and offer and keep in mind that you can go through, you can add to them, you can take things away, you can tweak it. You're gonna tweak it as you go, right? You're going to do that. Like I said before, when I was offering services as a VA, I honestly probably started off with about 15 different services, right? It's 50, 15 different things. I wrote down every single thing that I can do. I don't recommend that you do that, but if you're not sure what it is that you wanna do or what you wanna eliminate, then put them all up there. And then as you kind of go through your business, your business will start to evolve. You will start to evolve, you're going to start to get more skills and you're going to start eliminating things anyway. Now, once you start, kind of got that mapped out a little bit or to a degree, at least enough to start, right? Because it's about starting, right? You're going to grow over time. So it's really just about starting. So don't let any of this stuff stop you. But once you go through and do that, then you want to kind of determine your pricing. That sometimes is the, is the harder part when you're first starting out because you're trying to figure out what do people typically charge? What do other people charge for similar services? So typically with a virtual assistant, and this is going to be in the US, okay? Just a regular virtual assistant, general VA, typically makes anywhere from about $15 per hour to, to about $40 per hour for a general VA. Now, a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind regarding this is when you're determining your prices is that just because you're new, I don't think you should start at the bottom, okay? I don't think that you should do that at all. Start like midway, okay? Start like midway because I just don't think you should start at the bottom. There are the skills that you have, even though you are new to being quote unquote a VA and starting as your business, you're not new to the skills that you're offering because you got those skills from your nine to five. How long have you been at your nine to five? You've probably been at their your nine to five for a while. And so you have those skills just because your business is new don't mean you're new. Okay, so don't start at the bottom. Again, for the US is normally about 15 to $40 an hour if you are doing the hourly pricing. But with a virtual assistant or being a virtual assistant, there are different pricing models that you can do. And so this is going to be dependent also on what you want to do for your business, but also to on the services that you offer. So you have the hourly rate. So the hourly rate is what I described, like the 15 to $40. Maybe you're going through and you're doing inbox management, you're going through and you're tracking the tasks that you're doing, and then you provide the clients with an invoice for those particular services. There's also like your project base. So for example, like us, we offer website design services and our website design services, they are project based. It's for the complete project. So it may only take us 10 hours, but we're going to charge you for the project, not for an hourly rate. And then you also have retainer fees. So retainer fees is where a client goes through, they purchase like a package of your hours. So for example, let's say that they get 10 hours per month and you charge them $400 a month and they can use that 10 hours however they want throughout the month and then they can do any of the services that come with that so like I said when we were offering the 10 to 15 different services that they could choose from whatever of those hours or whatever those services they wanted just to use up their hours okay so the next thing I recommend is going through and developing some type of marketing plan okay so the marketing plan is going to be how you're going to go through and offer your services, whom you're going to offer your services to, and how you're going to start bringing in leads. Because you're going to want to bring in, you're going to need to bring in the several leads into your business. That way you can secure clients. And I also recommend having it mapped out of how much time can you actually dedicate to marketing as well as at what point do you become a book out, right? Because there's only a certain amount of hours that you have available that you can actually go through and work. So for some people that may be different. You may have four clients and now you're booked out because maybe you're working a hundred hours a month and now you might be booked out. So kind of determine that if you can 
not something you have to do from the very beginning. So when you go through and develop your marketing plan, it's going to be much easier. And I did not do this. So that's what I'm telling you. It's going to be much easier when you're developing your marketing plan that if you go through and create some type of client avatar. What do I mean by client avatar? A client avatar in essence is basically like a persona, right? Of a person that you're trying to bring in, that you have your leads for your actual clients, like your ideal client. Like ideally, who is it that you wanna go through and work with? So what are their characteristics? What is their motivation? What is their buying power? What are their age, their gender? Those type of things. What are their challenges? These are things that are gonna help you to determine for you to be able to go through and market to those particular people. It's just going to make it so much easier. So when you're going through in your marketing, so let's say you're doing TikTok or you're doing Instagram reels, or maybe you're doing social media or YouTube, or maybe you're doing networking events. When you know who your ideal client is, it's going to be much easier for you to be able to reach those people and bring those leads into your business. I understand from day one that you're probably not going to know who that person is. I did not know who that person was day one in my business. It actually took me years to figure out exactly who is it that I want to go through and work with? Who is my services for? And as we actually grew as a business and I grew as an entrepreneur, that also did change. So don't get discouraged or don't put this on the back burner just because you don't know who your person is yet. Don't put that on the back burner. Go ahead and continue to start your virtual assistant business. And as you continue to grow, believe me, a couple of things that you're going to figure out. You're going to figure out the services that you're offering, you're gonna figure out and start eliminating the things that you don't like to do. You're gonna figure that out eventually, I'm telling you. You're gonna figure out the clients that you don't wanna work with before you find out the clients that you do wanna work with. I can guarantee you. Cause you're gonna come across that client that you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, never ever will I do this again. So you're gonna figure that part out. And then eventually you're going to start figuring out who it is, exactly it is that your services is for. And this is gonna make you a better marketer and make you have you bring in more leads. Now, what I also recommend, because I know when you're coming from maybe your nine to five job or you're just now jumping into the online space, and people want to know exactly, can you do what you say you can do? And you may think that you don't have any proof of concept or any proof of your work. So what I would recommend is going to and creating some type of portfolio of the things that you know how to do. Now, there's certain things that it's harder to mock up than others, but I recommend that you put together some type of portfolio to show the skill sets that you have, the systems that you are familiar with using, the time that maybe that you have on using these particular systems and tools and the years of experience that you have doing said services and show any work that you can come up with. Let's say you haven't done anything outside of like your nine to five job, you can create mock projects to do a demo of what it is that you would do if you had a client. So let's say like you decide to offer graphic design or something like that. You can go inside of Canva and you can create a mock project and inside that mock project, just create something that you would do if you did have a client and you showcase that inside of your portfolio that you can put on your website or you can also create a website inside of Canva or some type of PDF page that you can go through and you can send out to your particular prospects. That way you're bringing in leads, you show proof, and now you're marketing your business with E. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is you want to invest into the right tools and systems. So the beauty of being a virtual assistant is that it doesn't take much overhead or cost or anything like that to get started. That's the beauty of the business, right? And so you just need general stuff. Like I said, you need a computer, you need internet, you need to have some type of email for communication. Well, that's all that you actually need. Now, there are some other things that you want to have in order just to help you run your business a little bit more smoothly. And a couple of those things are gonna be, I recommend a CRM system. I absolutely love HoneyBook. HoneyBook is gonna be your all-in-one system where you can do everything, where you can get contact forms and lead forms for your potential prospects to be able to submit inquiries to you. You can embed those onto your website. 
You can send out contracts, proposals, brochures. You can even sell digital products inside of HoneyBook. You can also have your scheduling. You can do your meetings. You can do so much more invoicing. Can't forget invoicing. You can do all of that inside of HoneyBook. So that is my CRM of choice. That is what I recommend. But whatever system that you use, I highly recommend that you have some type of CRM system. In case you do decide to use HoneyBook, I do have a 50% off your first year of HoneyBook book. That link is going to be in the description box below. And I have a few tutorials on this channel that will help you get started with that as well. The next thing is going to be some type of project management system. Now that is going to depend on exactly what it is that you're offering. You may not necessarily need this, but it depends on again on what you're offering. I personally like to use Trello, but there are so many different ones that you can use. You can use Notion, you can use Asana, you can use ClickUp. A lot of these have free versions that you can go through and use. Now I'm on the paid version version of Trello because I have a lot of different automation set up with that, but you can start off using those particular systems for free and actually go through and manage your clients and your client projects that you have to do, so like all of your tasks. Another thing is going to be some type of design tool. So to me, no matter what it is that you're using or what it is that you're doing, you're probably going to want to go through and design PDFs, maybe graphics for social media, things of that nature. So you're probably going to need to have Canva. And if you're not necessarily like like a major, major design type of person, then Canva is gonna be right for you because it is super, super easy to use. You can also use that for free. I'm on the paid version of that as well, but again, you can use it for free. So like your cost, again, if you can see, your cost for your virtual assistant business, the overhead of it is really, really low because there's so many free options that you can use there. And then you wanna have something where you can go through and track your time because most of your clients are probably gonna to want to know how much time you're spending on project, depending on if it's like project-based or something like that. Like, so for example, with websites, we don't go through ads, even though I track my time for everything that I do, me tracking my time, is something internally, not something that I provide to our clients to say, hey, this is how long we spend doing your website. But we still track our time because I still just need to know how long it actually took. I like to use Toggle, but there are other things that you can use like Clockify and some other ones. A lot of those that you can use for free. I am still on the free plan of Toggle. So it has a lot of great features inside of there. You can add your team members, which we also have as well. You can also print out reports and things of that nature too. So you can send that over to your clients to let them know how much spent time you actually spent on those projects. But just to let you know that even if, depending on what it is that you offer, despite what you're going to offer, I recommend that you track your time. Okay. I just kind of add that in there. Track your time because you may think that you know how long it takes you to do something, but it may take you longer. And that's going to kind of help you to kind of go back to your rate and your pricing. It's going to help you with your pricing and your rate when you know how long something takes you because you don't want to throw somebody a price for something and then it takes you way longer than what you expected, right? So just get in practice, especially in the beginning, just to track your time and so you know exactly how long you're spending on things. I also recommend having some type of like virtual conference room. So this is gonna be where you can meet with your clients. Now, despite whether or not you wanna go through and do what they call discovery calls, where you're going through and meeting with the clients virtually, or something like that. You don't have to do that. That's always an option. That's what a lot of people do in the VA world, but you don't have to particularly do that. I still do discovery calls for our website clients and for our system setups because I like to actually talk with the person prior to taking any exchange of any money contracts and things of that nature, but your processes could be possibly different. But I still kind of recommend having some type of virtual conference room. I personally like to use Zoom, but again, you can go through and use any type of service that you want. You also can be on a free version of Zoom that gives you a limited amount of minutes. And I said limited, okay? So limited amount of minutes. Okay, so your virtual assistant business is probably gonna need to have a website. Some people will tell you that you don't need to have a website for your business. I do beg to differ. Now you may not necessarily need a website day one, right? When I first started my business, I didn't have a website day one. It took me maybe three months or so to get a website. But the thing about with a website is that it is your digital home. It's a place where you can go through, you can build your credibility, you could showcase your services. It's a way that your clients and prospects can potentially reach out to you. 
So I highly recommend that you invest in a website. And nowadays with websites, you can pretty much DIY a website depending on your skill level because a lot of the website builders, like we use Squarespace, they're very responsive, they're easy to navigate and all of that. So you can easily DIY if you don't necessarily have the resources to start off with a website designer. However, again, having that website is going to help you to be able to bring in leads and done correctly, your website can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. I don't recommend going through and only just using social media because although social media is a great place for you to be able to bring in leads, you don't own social media. Like you don't own Instagram or TikTok and you are subject to number one, the algorithm. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not that favorable on Instagram. Like my, I don't really get any views or anything on Instagram. Now granted, I'm not on Instagram. I don't post on there often, but still, the algorithm doesn't like me there. <laughs> you are subject to the algorithm as well as to you're also subject to being your account being blobbed or something happening to your account and you're having to go through and start over. But if you go through and you move people away from your lead source, from your marketing on social media and start driving traffic to your website and email list, but we'll talk about that later in a later video, but to those particular places, now you're able to put them onto something that you actually own. So definitely go through, start going through, start working on your website, but don't let that stop you from launching, okay? You can launch without a website, okay? So I'm saying that you do need to have one, I recommend it, but don't allow it to start. Don't allow it to stop you. Continue to go through and get yourself out there, get all these other things done and work on your website as you go and then go through and start securing your social media handles as well so if you can go through and start securing all of your handles for your business definitely go through and do that i would have liked to really have gotten the same handle across all platforms i was not able to do that you might be able to do that there is a site that is called name checker you can go through and you can check that to see whether or not your social media handle is available across all of those platforms and if you do need any help with the website of course again like i said i'm a website designer so our information and link is going to be in the description box as well as we do have some templates coming soon to help you to be able to diy it to make it much easier for you to be able to get it live quicker okay so this is going to be a game changer for you it's building a community building your network start building a network of your potential clients of other virtual assistants and other people that offer complimentary services so what i mean by complimentary services so for example we offer website design so i like to network with copywriters and brand designers because we don't offer those services yet our clients do need those services at certain points so this allows for us to be able to go through if our clients need them then we can reach out to them refer our clients over to them to get those services and then allow us to be able to go through and complete our job Job and vice versa. If they don't offer website design, then they can also send clients over to us as well. So definitely making and networking and making those partnerships are going to be very beneficial to you starting your virtual assistant business and really any online business. So how to go about doing that is joining Facebook groups. Now I love Facebook groups. If you get yourself into a really good Facebook group, you can really strive or thrive <laughs> in business, just making connections and getting referrals from other people, which is definitely a really good way to start bringing in clients. So there are groups like, for example, like the Virtual Savvies group is a really good group for you to join as a virtual assistant. I highly recommend that you get inside there. And just to let you know too, when I first started my virtual assistant business, I was just doing it on my own and I did get clients. But when I was ready to go through and up level my VA business, I did take the Virtual Savvy course. So I will put the link in the description box of the course that I took to level up my virtual assistant business because that course allowed for me to be able to book more clients. I got my money back literally probably within the first 30 days because I was able to go through and book clients. I had a template for a portfolio she had in there. She had um, a lot of video tutorials. They have a separate amazing community 
four of those that are inside of the course as well as she does have like i said templates there are some documents in there they also have like monthly coaching it's a lot that's in there i'll put the link in the description box below for you to go through and check that out in case you're like hey i just rather just go through and just skip the line and start it and have all the resources that i need then definitely go through and check that out we also do have a community that's coming up as well called the just launch it networking club and this club is going to be for creatives for coaches for consultants that are wanting to network with other go-getters that are trying to navigate their way through entrepreneurs and through the online space because I don't I believe that we shouldn't go through entrepreneurship all up because it can be a very lonely place but through the networking club we're coming together so we can work together we can do online coaching calls together as well as there's going to be like a members area where you can display your information and your social links and websites and again, network with other like-minded individuals so you can get feedback and share your wins and your challenges and all of that goodness. So I'm gonna put the wait list link to that so I can notify you once the doors to that opens up in case you do like to join. But definitely search on Facebook, LinkedIn for groups that you can go through and join with your potential clients with other service providers that are going to be able to support you during your entrepreneurship journey and just refer people over to you and vice versa and you can learn from and get information from. In case you got any value from this, which I hope that you did, please be sure, give me a like and share this video with one of your friends that you're like, you know what girl, we need to go ahead and start this business this year and stop playing. And then be sure to subscribe because I have plenty more videos just like this that I'm gonna be sharing this content to really help you grow your business this year year. I have a couple of videos that's going to show up on this next screen that you may be interested in that's going to give you some more gems of starting and launching, growing, streamlining, and automating your online business. So until next time, just keep learning and keep growing. Bye-bye.